before we start uh, this uh, new lesson, let me uh, revise briefly what we have learned so far and what we have covered so far in the topic of gum and stabilizers. So far, we have learned about uh, various types of hydrocolloids, and uh, all of them are derived from plant. For example, uh, agar, carrageenan, alginate are derived from seaweed. Uh, locust bean gum are derived from locust bean. Gum arabic from acacia senegal tree. Pectin from uh, apple pomace. So uh, all of these actually are examples of hydrocolloids from plant. In this lecture, let me introduce the only type of hydrocolloids derived from animal. I'm sure you have heard or you have read about it uh, somewhere. In fact, maybe you have eaten it uh, in your food. And this special hydrocolloid that we are going to learn in this lesson is called gelatin. In this slide, you can see the market share of hydrocolloids for food application. And notice that among the plant hydrocolloids, starch, pectin, and carrageenan appear to dominate. But look at gelatin. It seems that gelatin has the biggest market share among all the hydrocolloids. These data are interesting. Can you figure out why gelatin has, uh, is such an important hydrocolloid? So now let us learn more about this important hydrocolloid. Gelatin has been defined as a product obtained by the partial hydrolysis of collagen derived from the skin, white connective tissue, and bones of animals. So we can say that gelatin does not exist naturally in nature. It is a product obtained by hydrolyzing collagen. We will look at the processing to see how do we get gelatin from collagen a bit later. Gelatin is actually a protein. Um, it is a polymer of amino acids joined together by peptide bonds. It is actually a mixture of high molecular weight peptides produced by partial hydrolysis of a bigger and more complex protein that is collagen by using acid or alkaline treatment. The chemical composition of gelatin is in many respects closely similar to that of its parent collagen. Gelatin molecules are quite large, with molecular weight ranging from a few thousand up to several hundred thousand deltons. The molecular weight distribution of gelatin has a great impact on the physical properties of gelatin and particularly affects viscosity and gel strength values. Glycine accounts for around one third of all the amino acids in gelatin. Gelatin is unique in this sense because it contains an unusual high level of the cyclic amino acids proline and hydroxyproline. And this, uh, the presence of these amino acids are critical or important because it dictates or controls the gelling ability of a gelatin. The higher amount of, of these amino acids actually uh, would give a firmer gel for gelatin. This is actually the reason why mammalian gelatin from porcine and from bovine has a higher gel strength because uh, they contain more proline and hydroxyproline compared to, uh, for example, fish gelatin, which contain lower amount of this amino acid. Now let's learn a bit more about collagen, which is the raw material we uh, use to produce uh, gelatin. The worldwide production of gelatin is about 300,000 tons per year. And gelatin is derived mainly from uh, pork skin, pork and cattle bones, or split cattle hides. Recently, um, fish byproducts such as fish skin have also been considered because, uh, because of the halal issue related to um, raw material from bovine and from porcine. In the processing of collagen to gelatin, the raw materials undergo uh, different steps. Um, for example, curing, acid, and alkaline uh, processes. And this uh, different step can take up, up to several weeks. And uh, the processing conditions uh, can have a great impact or great effects on the properties of the final gelatin products. If you are interested to learn uh, in more detail about the uh, processing of collagen to gelatin, uh, this is one of the websites where you can learn uh, a little bit more about the processing aspect. Now let's look at the different types of commercial gelatin uh, available. 
There are several varieties of gelatin, the composition of which depends on the source of collagen and the hydro hydrolytic treatment used. The type A uh, actually uh, uses acid process and is mainly used for pig skin and the fish uh, skin and sometimes bone uh, raw materials and resulting gelatin has um, PI or isoelectric point um, in the range of 7 to 9. The type B is actually used alkaline uh, process and usually uh, used primarily for cattle or calf hides and osin and um, resulting gelatin has a isoelectric point between 4.8 to 5.5. Gelatin most important attribute is its gel strength and when the gel strength is determined by the standard method it is called the bloom strength or the bloom value. It is the force expressed in grams necessary to depress by 4 mm the surface of gelatin gel with a standard plunger. The gel has uh, a concentration of 6.67% and has been kept for 17 hours at 10 degrees Celsius. Commercial products normally have bloom values uh, that fall between 50 to 280 and it can be further classified to low bloom uh, with less than 120 gram medium bloom uh, between 120 and 200 gram and the high bloom uh, with more than 200 gram. The commercial value of gelatin increases with increasing bloom. So the price of commercial gelatin is usually based on its bloom value. So you would expect to pay uh, more for gelatin with 250 bloom compared to gelatin with 150 bloom. The choice of which, uh, which type of gelatin and what bloom to use depends on the application. It is important to bear in mind that pH and temperature can reduce the gel strength of gelatin. Commercial gelatin is available in two forms, the granulate and the leaf or sheet form. For industrial application, the gelatin granulate can have particle size ranging from 0.1 mm to 10, and 10 uh, mm. Gelatin leaf or sheet is the preferred type for use in households, bakeries, and catering. The advantage of using gelatin sheet is mainly just for convenience because one sheet of gelatin always produces the same gel strength. The gelling power of powder gelatin as sold in small unit for household use is, however, uh, not, not standardized. Each brand might well have different gelling, gelling quality. So the, the user must determine the right amount to use to achieve the desired effect. So here is the thing to ponder. How do you decide which type of gelatin to use? Type A or type B? Low bloom or medium or high bloom? So maybe uh, you want to do some uh, reading and try to find out the answer. Obviously, gelatin is indeed a very unique hydrocolloid. The question is, what kind of properties that made gelatin so special? Let us examine in more detail. The uniqueness of gelatin is its uh, versatility and its ability to perform multiple functions. For example, as food ingredients, its gelling ability making it very useful as a gelling agent uh, in products like uh, jelly, um, whereas the surface active property making it very effective as emulsifying and forming agent. Uh, in pharmaceutical and biomedical products, gelatin um, has been used in the production of soft or hard capsules as a plasma expander in wound dressing, sponges for surgery, and in non-food application. Gelatin has been used for a long time in photography, in the photographic film, in carbonless paper, cosmetic, matchstick, paintball, and high gloss inkjet paper. So these are some of the points that I have just mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, with additional point, um, the gelatin is also uh, has a grass status. Some other advantages of gelatin are the highly reproducible uh, production, meaning that the quality is consistent from batch to batch with well-controllable physical parameters. 
for example the gel strength gelatin like any other proteins is amphoteric so we can manipulate the properties by changing the pH of the system this property is important for example when gelatin is used as a finding agent in the fruit juice uh, clarification so here is another thing to ponder how does amphoteric property of gelatin make make it uh, make it unique so um, try to uh, do some reading and find out the answer for this question so now let's um, talk about why gelatin is special in food application the most commonly used gelatin property is its ability to form thermoreversible gel which means that you know you can form the gel uh, then after that you can melt the gel again so this is what the, what is the, uh, the meaning of the more reversible gels at a few percent concentration in water gelatin's uh, melting temperature is be below 30, 30, 35 or 37 degrees celsius which is below body temperature and this would provide gelatin products with a unique melt in mouth quality this uh, melt-in-mouth perception would lead to intensive flavor and aroma release. At higher concentration, um, gelatin would give elastic gum-like textures with, uh, which slowly dissolve in the mouth. And it is also an effective emulsifying and forming agent. So scientists have not yet been uh, able to find a gelling protein or uh, other type of plant polysaccharide that can universally replicate the properties of gelatin. So this is why we consider gelatin as unique because it's very difficult to uh, simulate all the, prop the functional properties of gelatin. So basically we can uh, group functional properties gel uh, of gelatin into two. Uh, the gelling property and also the surface property for the properties associated with gelling uh, we are concerned usually uh, with these parameters the gel strength the gelling time setting and melting temperatures viscosity thickening texturizing and water binding as for the surface properties usually this uh, in, the, in the processing we are concerned with the emulsion formation and st stabilization Protect, protective colloid function, foam formation and stabilization such as in marshmallow, film uh, formation and adhesion and cohesion. Whoa, what is this? Fruit gummies. Okay, now let's look at uh, application of gelatin in uh, specific application. In fruit gummies, gelatin is used as a gelling agent as well as a texturizing agent. In the mouth, when you eat the fruit gummies, the, the gummies absorb water rapidly. The melting point decreases to body temperature, the gel melts, and the aroma and the flavors are released. Hmm, can you imagine that? Very nice, isn't it? Other types of gelling agents such as agar or carrageenan cannot demonstrate the same properties. So the choice of the type of gelatin, whether it is type A or type B, is important because it affects the texture of the gummies. In most cases, the use of high bloom type A gelatin is uh, recommended. Whoa, what's this? An ice cream. Yes, frozen dairy products such as ice creams uh, use gelatin to give the smooth mouthfeel. Uh, reminds me of my favorite McDonald ice cream. Gelatin also functions to inhibit crystallization of ice and sugar, which can cause, uh, cause rend, uh, sandy mouthfeel of the ice cream. Only a small, of, uh, a small amount of gelatin uh, is needed, typically ranging from 0.25 to 0.5%. Okay, do you like marshmallow? Marshmallow is a type of solid foam, just like the sponge. The soft texture and spongy structure of marshmallow is due to air bubbles trapped in the structure of the product. In this case, gelatin is used as a forming agent and to stabilize the foam so that it won't collapse. 
Gelatin also prevents crystallization of uh, sucrose, which is undesirable. In products like uh, chocolate bars, as you can see on the slide here, gelatin is used in the form of gelatin uh, hydrolysate which can be used as a good uh, binding agent because it possesses excellent adhesive qualities which enable it to be used for the production of uh, various types of bars. Actually, we can also use sugar as a binding agent but it will, it will require very high concentration. So we can produce low sugar or low calorie bars by using gelatin instead of sugar as the binding agent. Okay, now let's look at uh, gelatin as a fat substitute. Because of the worldwide trend in healthy diet, low-fat products are highly demanded. Low-fat version of butter, cheese, and margarine are available. The problem is when, when we remove the fat, we also remove the creaminess and mouthfeel of fat, and we replace with water. Gelatin is used in this case to immobilize water and prevent cyanuresis which is a separation of water from the solid phase or from the gel phase. So this will keep the product stable. Gelatin also improves the consistency and enhances the structure and the mouthfeel of the product. Okay, now let's uh, look at uh, the application of gelatin as a clarifying agent in the production of uh, fruit juice. The function of finding process in the production of fruit uh, juices, beer, and wine is to remove unwanted color, haze, bitterness, excessive astringency of flavors, and unpleasant odors. Gelatin is used in the, in the production of these beverages not just for the clarification and the precipitation of substances causing turbidity, but also for reducing the concentration of polyphenols such as tannins. If the process is done correctly, it should be able to produce beverage with good balance of taste, color, aroma, and clarity.